Hello everyone, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration, uh, expansion, extension, whichever one this is. It's not exploration, it's one of the other two. So, you join me just as I've launched the second um, dry dock assembly component that's going up in the rocket as we speak. And I'm expecting to see this tick up to two fairly quickly. And I've also, just before that launched, I've removed the logistics request from this chest because now this has done everything it needs to. It's full of other stuff, but... Um, yeah, never mind. Hopefully we'll uh, have to do something with those. I'm not quite sure what yet. Maybe I can use these as um, normal assembly robots. Let's find out. Nope, they're weird. Can't use them. Okay, it hasn't. That hasn't increased. Maybe that was. Maybe that was actually only the first one. Okay, so what does this still need? It still need, it needs those assembly robots back. Um, it needs some more of those. It needs another 30 of them. And actually, that's everything it needs. Awesome. I may have jumped the gun slightly there. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's request those. And then we'll head back up to the, um, the station up top where they're being... The place up top where they're being made. And just make sure everything's going as it should up there. And I'm not going to end up making too many of them. So, while that's going on... I've done a few other things since the uh, last episode. One of the most important ones, the one I was talking about beforehand, was getting my copper supply up and up to a decent speed. And now look, these, these um, two warehouses are absolutely full because I've got essentially three green belts of copper going up here. And I got this boost largely by putting in productivity modules into all of these um, casting machines. So I'm getting two and a half times as much copper out now. But I also went in and I put in an extra column of these um, ore processors here because this, this was the one that was well behind. And I think I did some funny business with, yes, here we go, I did some funny business with belts along here and splitters and things to try and, um, essentially because this one is only was only feeding one bank of processing machines and this one was feeding two. So obviously this this one had more, <laughs> need, need to be producing more. And it was because as its second one, I had this feeding um, these machines here that were producing ingots to go off to this array that I'm no longer using. So it was it was originally balanced, but then um, I just ended up using significantly more of the actual just straightforward plates. So I've um, I've gone in and I've messed around with that basically by um, yeah it's mostly productivity modules, but also I've used these um, these belts to pull some of what I'm producing down here into this one as well, and then prioritised and prioritise the stuff coming from the bottom array. So, that sorted that out. And, to be honest, the productivity modules weren't necessary. I could have got the same effect by just having um, three times as much, three times as many of all of the processing steps. But that would have required a lot more raw materials and a lot more of the intermediate processing. So, I decided since power is so easy, it made a lot more sense to have it to use the, use the modules even though it does boost the amount of power I end up using. And as you can see I've still got plenty of power available even though at the moment my yeah my assembly machines are using massive quantities of power and that's because they're the things that have got most of the uh, modules in. Okay, other things I've been doing. Well, as part of the um, sp space expansion I, I needed to have um, advanced, uh, the, the particularly uh, sp there. specifically I needed to have the large power large solar panel 3 which is what's being made in this machine here um, so I've got large 3 and small 3 here so I've got one being made then two then three is being passed up the chain as as, as normal um, and conveniently the different sizes require exactly the same input components so I've just stacked the two of them up like this it's nice and easy I haven't bothered with small because I haven't needed them yet but I if they're the same again and I can just stack them in along the top of there as well I could also if I decide I need more um, solar panels being made or being made more quickly again I can put in another row making making more advanced ones and at some point now I've got a thousand of these I might consider upgrading some of my solar arrays like this one another thing I've done is expanded the rails around here so a lot of this before was just single single track going around one way and I'm now in the process of going around and putting them in in, in, in two, two directions because there's a bit missing there because it hasn't quite been finished yet and I've punched a gap up through these uh, solar arrays and I need to have a, a line going up there to join those together so there's there's a, a fair amount of work needs to be done on this yet putting the signals in because otherwise I'm going to find that trains just get confused and can't get through places uh, so that's that's going to need some work but also I've got, um, oh, is that in range? No. <laughs> um, that's an interesting problem. Let's put 
that there. That'll solve that. Okay, so one of the other things I did was there was there was a rubite mine up here in this convenient gap. In fact, you can see a couple of tiny little bits of rubite left at the top here. Um, and that, that mine was completely depleted. So I've deleted it and put in a new one over here. This is still in the process of being built because we haven't got the, the train lines in down here uh, because I haven't managed to power up this... Um, just this robo port now the idea was it was going to be powered from down here like that but that one can't be placed until this port starts working and I've started using the robo port mark fours now so you'll see there's this massive gap across here that I'm able to do with the fours compared to this little gap that I was able to do with the twos and probably yeah this even smaller gap there's what, what I was able to do with the ones I think yes so those were originally uh, robo port mark ones they've been upgraded to twos since but I haven't gone through and and taken out three quarters of them, um, but they're, so they've still got the original Mark One spacing. Then we've got the Mark Two spacing here and the Mark Four spacing here. So you can see the advantages you get from the uh, progression. And now that I'm using the nuclear assembly machines, it's not going to be so much of a problem. I, I don't need the same density of robo ports in order to charge them. It is still quite difficult having this sort of range of um, on on one single um, robot network. <laughs> just missed one great uh, because the robot whenever I place if I place any pipes over here for example the robots have to f pick up the pipes from over here and then fly all the way across the map and with the ones that actually had to charge at robo ports that took forever if you're doing a large build out because they would all clump around the same one trying to charge up but with the nuclear ones it's actually not a problem they can just keep flying all the way across like this and it's, it's absolutely fantastic because you don't need to worry about it at all. They, they, it takes a while to fly that distance, but it doesn't actually cause any problems. So that's going pretty well. Um, so we've got we've got the new new mine down here. We've got the space extension thing happening, and that's going pretty well too. Uh, those those are coming in with uh, it must be, it must be the rail just to finish this section off. Great, and then we can start getting trains down there. Um, so there was the, I, I talked about the space expansion that needed these, and also I built I have it building the um, the space expansion uh, construction robots here. And that probably needs to be stopped now because have, have I got have I got enough of them? I've, I've forgotten and I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> oh, I feel disorganised. No, I do still need more. Okay, so that's that should still be running. Um, what does it take in and what does it take out? Okay, it takes these Mark IVs, which should be... Why are you not being built? What are you missing? Oh, you're missing these, these green brains that are coming around at a relatively slow rate. And they're slow because... I think they're just slow because they take quite a long time to build, so that's okay. I don't mind that. Um, so these will eventually um, eventually tick over and, start and, and produce all, all the bots I need. I could, oh, let's mod module them while I'm here, uh, just to make things a bit quicker and produce a few more, because I am getting a bit impatient waiting for these, um, waiting for the in more of these green robots, because as you saw, it took quite a long time to get all of this up and running. It's, in fact, it's still not quite finished, there's still a few bits of rail left. Um, with the bots, yeah, there they are, flying over for it. So it, it, it's a slow process, and I, I need to have lots and lots of construction bots, because every so often I, I drop in a massive construction like that, and I'd like to have it done quickly, or like this one. That's another gap. So, yeah, one of the slight frustrations with Factorio at the moment is that you have, if you want to do something like this, where you build a, a, a bridge of landfill and then put a railway across it, or, or anything across it, you have to do it in two separate stages. You put the landfill down, then you go away and do something else and forget all about it while you wait for the robots to lay the landfill, because you can't actually lay anything on top of the landfill until the landfill has actually been laid. So you can't you can't put down multiple logistics uh, so construction bot orders, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah, never mind. It just means I have to do these things in, in two steps. Weirdly, with um, when you delete something, you can do it all in one go. So when I put this line through here, I was able to delete all of the uh, set, set an instruction to delete all of the solar panels and put down the track at the same time. I didn't have to come back later. So that's a little bit weird. Let's see, oh, there was one other. Th there's one other thing that's sort of completely unrelated that I've done since the last episode, and that was with the biters over here again. So I've, I realised that, the, as has always been the case, um, the food production oh, has gone very, very wrong there. I need to have a look at why. How has that got in there?
that's clogged up so I'm going to need to go in and clean that out but I was having problems with food production and I wasn't producing the food quickly enough and I realized that basically the, the part of the problem was that I was turning food into medium biters using this and there and these and then I was going oh I've got more medium biters than I need and dumping them into the um, back into the food production facility here and that's a massive waste of food because it essentially you end up turning um, two food into one food <laughs> that's not productive so what I've done is I put in these um, sensors that are reading the um, reading the belts and then telling and then feeding the uh, instruction over to here so so essentially this this bit of the um, this piece of belt here will only run when this one is, ha doesn't have any um, crystals on it so once this system starts to back up which means I don't need any more crystals coming through then it will turn off the food supply to over here and therefore the biters will stop being produced however something has gone s strange here um, yeah I've got too many biters again <laughs> I'm going to need to go in and work out why I probably it's probably I probably need to have the same thing going on here if this is full then to turn this off yeah I think that'll do it because this, this is clogged up in here because it can't feed the biters around anymore so there's a couple of things to fix there I've got the same sort of thing happening somewhere else as well I think yeah so here if there's um, if this is completely backed up and there's a solid row of a solid row of biters in there then that means I've got enough of them being hatched and therefore it cuts off the food supply at this point which will turn off these production machines um, that isn't the case at the moment I seem to actually be getting through the big biters faster than I'm producing them which is a bit of a problem I'm going to need to go in and tweak the balance here so there's a bit more work needed here but what I've done is it will hopefully be the sort of the, st the starting point of getting this sorted out in fact that probably shouldn't be there it should probably be there no, I think I need a separate link across there. Yeah, okay, so there's a couple of things left to be done in there, and I'll go in and sort those out before the next episode. Still, that's been... I feel like I've done quite a lot since the last episode, even though, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's it's hard to say. I've got um, I've got a certain amount of um, extra space stuff done. Here we go, there's, that's now up to 27 out of 50, I think. Let me check that. Not that one. Yes, 50. So that's more than halfway, which means it's more than three quarters of the way because this is the second one it's working on now. So that's mostly okay. It's just it's just ticking over slowly. Ha! Huh. If I production moduled that, it would have finished by now. Except I probably can't because it'll be it'll think of it as a final component. Okay. So steps for the next episode. Steps for things to do for the next episode sort out these bloody biters again because that's still not working quite as it should do get this um, this finished off so that that, that, that second um, dry dock component can be launched and get the dry docks finished and find out what comes next um, I've got research trying to happen the problem is it's all a bit yet it's limited by the number of um, yellow yellow science packs I've got because as you, as you may remember I was I was working on one of the FTL research yeah this FTL research and that requires so many that it was just, it just used up my entire supply of yellow yellow science so this is being made as fast as it possibly can um, but as you can see there's still none down here and over here over here research is going is going okay I think um, yeah it looks like this is being fed through but keeping up all of these are all of these are running So this, oh no, there's a big gap in the yellows. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's it's mostly working, um, but it's a bit too. Uh, but yeah, the, the the I've got so many research machine labs now that it's using up science much much faster than I can make it over here. So I think the first step of fixing this is going to be to upgrade all of these assembly machines to the next level up of assembly machines. That'll speed things up a bit, and also to go around and make sure I've got assembly mo uh, construct productivity modules in everything and then I think I might need to go in and put productivity modules in a lot of the precursor things like these and then put in extra machines to make the um, actual the actual science packs because if I if I try and just multiply this up and make another copy of it then it's going to get through resources so quickly that I'm not, 
uh, the rest of the base is probably the production side of the base is probably going to struggle to keep up and i'm aware that's sort of the point of factorio in a way in that you you um you have to try and boost your uh, supplies to meet demand and then boost the supplies of those supplies to meet the, the new demand and so on but i think with given that i've got these productivity modules i'm going to try and use them to an extent and see how that goes I'm also going to upgrade some of these solar panels to solar panel Mark III's because why not? I've got them now and it'll it'll increase the amount of power I get by a fairly significant amount. And beyond that, well, we'll see. <laughs> I hope you'll come back and find out what else I've been up to. Um, I think this is going quite well now. So I've, I've been saying this quite a lot. There's some more gaps in the rail down here. I'll fix them in a minute. I think this is generally going pretty well. I'm making inroads into space expansion. But there's quite a lot, long way to go, and, the, and those F, and those FTL research topics are going to be difficult. I mean, you've got the two million yellow here, then two million yellow and red, two million yellow, red and blue, and a, oh my god, all the way up until it requires just two million of absolutely everything. So it's going to be a massive resource sink. But we'll just have to see how that goes. Great. So I think that's all going quite well. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time when I shall carry on, sort of picking up little things around the edges and uh, and working on the on the space space expansion see you then